don't know, man, the whole era of the session guy thing is kind of dwindled. It's not over, but it's certainly not prevalent anymore. People don't have the budgets anymore, and you do have the ability to, you know, laptops, you, you know, you can have, you can download or buy software or download software to be able to record in your house. No problem. Pro Tools is affordable to people now. You don't need half a million dollars to build a studio. You can do, you know, for a few thousand dollars, you can do digital quality recording now. And you can fix things. If you can't sing in tune, you can fix that. If you can't really play that well, you can cut and paste and put it on a grid and put it in time. So, you know, it levels the playing field to a certain degree. And if, if you're very creative, it's cool. I mean, you can see really interesting things out there. But, you know, I come from a school where, like, you know, I used to have to lift up the needle and learn solos really old school. And it was really very difficult. But it caused you to get a lot of great ear training. And, and it was... You appreciated somebody that could actually take the time to learn a, a really famous guitar solo and then teach it to somebody else, and that kind of knowledge is passed. Now you just punch something in, boom! There's the guy teaching how to do it. And well, and my my older kids, I mean, it's all texting. Music is almost background music. We used to sit and listen to records like it was like the only thing that mattered. The music was the only thing that was like cut you off from the rest of the world. You know, it was an emotional, full-on experience. Now it's like people pick tracks and. They don't really care about the sonic quality of it all. It's just like, oh yeah, I like that tune, whatever. I don't like the whole record. I don't listen to the whole record because I want to just listen to one tune here, one tune. But it costs money to make these records. If you really, I still go from the quality. I mean, you know, they couldn't make Dark Side of the Moon in their living room. You know what I mean? You know, these are albums that took, you know, a long time, a lot of effort, a lot of meticulous love and art and craft to make. And I come from that era, so I'm trying to keep that alive. And that's what I did with my new record. I tried to spend a lot of time and money and effort to try to make the best music I possibly could. Well, you know, I, I noticed, like, you know, because of the social networking, you know, my audience varies from younger people to people my own age and even older. you got a wide cross, you know, you, the misunderstanding, Standing, or I shouldn't say that's maybe that's the right word, but the illusion that like only people my age are going to listen to the music that I make, you know. I think classic rock has transcended to the younger generation. They, they don't maybe understand why. There's something about it because it's very real. It's got a, it breathes. I come from that era of musicianship and also production. I love the big production, and I, and I welcome the new technology and, and, and all that stuff, but I try to use it in a creative way, not as an excuse. My, I'm just trying to get to everybody. I'm trying to get as many people that can, maybe they're just moved by a lyric, or maybe they're guitar players, or maybe they're musicians, or they like Toto, my old band. I'm trying to get as many people as possible. I'm really proud of this record. You know, uh, I've worked hard on it. I'm starting a tour in November. We'll be touring the world. It's a personal record. Uh, melodically, I tried not to Steer, I steer away from any cliche possible as far as a lot of pop music now. You really kind of already know the chords that are going to happen right before they happen because it's kind of like there's a familiarity. People say, that's the hit formula. I stay away from any, any formula. I still wanted to make melodic rock music, for lack of a better term, but without the cliches, you know, and yeah. give my best honest, heartfelt soul for you all to really enjoy. So please uh, check out if you would. Yeah, I change equipment all the time. I mean, I use Music Man guitars exclusively, but I have a lot of the old vintage guitars, you know, Les Pauls and Fenders and uh, various boxes and weird quirky little instruments. But uh, generally, I mean, 99.9% .9 of the time I'm using a uh, Music Man loop guitar, which is I helped design with the wonderful people at Music Man. And amplification is always changing. The new album, I used a lot of Bogner stuff. I've used Marshalls a lot. I use Bob Bradshaw has designed these systems throughout the years that I love and use. You know, particularly in a live scenario. A lot of times, I just plug straight into an amp. You know, I got lots of little those little pedals and little gadgets. You plug some in, they work. You plug some in, they don't work. So, uh, you know, it, we're always in in the eternal quest for the ultimate tone. I guess I'll die trying.
Oh wow, that was a long time ago, man. Uh, I, I have worked. I have worked with uh, the other heroes of mine. I mean, Jeff Beck to me is the one of the greatest guitar players ever to pick up the instrument. You know? and I, I produced a record that never came out, uh, which is a shame because it was really great stuff. But you know, that was I was just a kid in my twenties then. You know what I mean? You know, and then they put this stuff up on YouTube, and everybody, you know, it was just a jam. You know what I mean? And here I am playing with my heroes, and then the YouTube police come along and beat the hell out of you. You know what I mean? I was a kid. You know. I became a whipping post for that. It kind of put me in therapy for a while. I was so kind of tortured by it all. I was like, wow, God, I'm sorry. I mean, it was in the mid-80s when all the tapping and all this stuff was going on. I was doing that, and people were going, you suck for doing that, and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. How dare you? To me, it was just a great honor to play with some heroes of mine, and, and, and we got on really well, and I was very respectful to them. And I met Simon Phillips there, who later became the drummer after, after Jeff passed away, with Toto, and... Dougie Wimbish, who played the Living Color. I mean, you know, I made a lot of lifelong friends there. <clears throat> Unfortunately, YouTube is great for many things, but I wish they'd get rid of the comments, you know, where people fight amongst themselves and all the negative. There's enough negative crap in the world without going like, at one minute and 43 seconds, there, you played sloppy or out of tune, or I was drunk at a party or something. I got up with somebody famous, and it ends up on the internet, and people are judging you as if it was a pristine performance to, to be judged. I mean, it's just, you know, everybody's a critic, you know? Nobody's perfect, certainly not me. God, I'm sorry, I apologize, you know? I'm my therapist, like, you know, I, I don't read the good ones or the bad ones. I just try the best I can to try to keep moving straight ahead. You know, I've done some embarrassing things, and, you know, some, I had a tendency, if I was drunk or nervous, to overplay in a scenario like that, and then I'm guilty as charged. I'm human. I like the funny stuff. Like there's this thing called shreds where the guy sits there and they overdub all your playing really badly, but it looks like you're playing it. It's really funny stuff. I mean, I get the joke. But it's the mean, horrible, mean-spirited stuff that I just, it's like, wow, man. You don't even know me and you hate me. That's not fair. Everybody wants to have the last word. You know what I mean? Everybody's a blogger. Everybody's an expert on everything. But then when you look into their lives, if you bother, you see that they're just weak people that have no life other than to go put down other people's lives who they wish they had that life. I mean, really, you know, I mean, yeah, I don't know. I can't be bothered with it. I'm getting too old for this stuff, you know. If you don't like me, I'm sorry. If you do, thank you very much. <laughs>22 years with the solo material to do, lots of side projects. I'm not going to do Toto songs. I, I don't believe in messing with the legacy of that band unless I'm working with the actual musicians in that band because I've seen it done by other ex-members and it just doesn't seem to work very well for me. You know, I mean, there's a magic that happens when that group of people play together. And I have enough stuff on my own and I'm playing smaller places. The people who come see me know that I'm not going to sing Rosanna in Africa, you know what I mean? Uh, but, you know, occasionally I'll dig out an obscure Toto song that I wrote and sang, you know, if I feel like, you know, they might be relevant or necessary or something like that, or just for fun. But generally, I got a lot of material to call from just on my own. Thanks a lot for hanging in there with me. Uh, for those of you that are new, it's nice to meet you. And those of you that are old friends, thanks a lot for hanging in there with me for almost 35 years now. Damn. Time flies when you're having fun. God bless and be careful. Peace. Come out for the show now. See you.